Howdy friends, I'm Joe for those that don't know. And today I am working on starting, the chick starting our chicken coop. For those of you that watch the channel regularly, you may notice that when I build things, I seem to go a little bit overboard and over engineer it and overdo it. And this will not be an exception. So let's go over materials real quick. I am gonna put it on top of railroad ties. I have them around a lot of these things. Let me put it this way. I'm trying to use what I have around the homestead. Uh, I have plenty of railroad ties, plywood. I usually keep a good stock of, of plywoods. The only thing that I don't really hold on to very much is framing material, two by fours and two by sixes, because if I hold on to them for too long, they'll start to twist and get hard. And it's just, it's almost wasting money by holding on to these materials if I don't have a good place to put them. So I usually just buy what I need. Let's, uh, let's come over here and take a look at the materials that I plan on using. For the framing structure, I'm gonna do two by four walls. I have a really interesting idea for the corners that'll hold up the roof structure. That's what the four by fours are all about. The floor framing will be out of pressure treated two by six. And I got all that here. And then the roof package is here. The pressure treated framing is gonna sit on top of railroad ties. That way I can drag it around with that tractor. See if it lights up, there we go. Plywood, I usually keep plywood on hand. It's easy to store somewhat and it's always handy to have some plywood hanging out and concrete. Now the plan. Luckily I am uh, blessed to have a wife that is a drafter so she was able to put this together for me, which it's always good to have a plan and just know what I'm doing before I do it, especially when I'm filming this because it's difficult to think about five things at once. So this will be the front of it. To have a good sized door. It'll be all open front here just to get lots of ventilation. Also the top will have the ventilation. And then you can see these posts here, which will be those four by fours. Here's a side view, which should be pretty nice. Also there is my material list. By the end of this series, I hope on having a material list and some plans available that I will give to y'all so you guys can uh, follow along and, and give this a try. First things first, I'm gonna drag out some plywood and prime the underside of it because it will be uh, exposed to the, the element, not necessarily the elements from underneath, but I just like having it primed under there in case there is moisture and stuff underneath the structure. You'll see as we go along. Now, when I say primer, I'm talking more of just some sort of paint. What I have here is some exterior paint left over from uh, some projects. And I'm doing these 24 inches on center, so I'll mark it 23 and 3 quarters. So go to your two foot mark, or if you were doing it 16, and then minus 3 quarter. 48 minus 3 quarter. And so on. And then put your X towards the, the two foot mark there. When you put your joist on there, it'll be 24 on center. When you're putting in nails so close to the edge on a board, it's always good to to pre-drill it because there is a chance there is a chance that it could split. So it's just kind of good insurance.
So now we got the frame put together. One thing we want to do before we throw the plywood on just to make life a little bit easier is we'll check for square. Now, if you got a uh, framing square, you could put that in there and and move it around. It, it might need some racking a little bit one way or the other. Or you can just use your tape measure and measure from uh, corner to corner. Pretty close. Once you get the plywood on, you could set a corner and then kind of kick it around so the plywood's gonna be square. The way that I'm building this is an eight foot sheet of plywood will fit right here, no cuts. And then we'll do a, or a four by eight sheet will fit here. And then we'll do a two foot section and we'll have two feet left over for the uh, roosting boxes or the nesting boxes. So I go inside for a few because little one wants uh, daddy for a nap time. They come out and it looks like it's gonna rain. So real quick before it does, I wanna show you one more thing that I wanted to do to this plywood before I, before I put it on. Um, those four by fours I was talking about, I'm gonna have them going through the floor into the um, floor framing. That way, because this thing is gonna be being pulled on skids, I feel like having those posts go through and kind of locking the whole thing together with the floor instead of just having the walls built on top kind of flopping around this would kind of tie everything together so real quick let me show you what we're doing here i went and grabbed a short piece four by four that i had laying around and so what i'm going to do is cut the corner of this plywood out uh, three and a half by three and a half basically there'll be a, a three and a half by three and a half square cut out right here and then later on we'll cut the four by four posts to fit inside of here so the four by four post is supposed to sit like this so i'll end up cutting an inch and a half out here and an inch and a half on the back side here and it'll slide down and then we'll bolt it to framing or floor framing members When you're nailing into pressure treated lumber it's good to use galvanized nails so for the flooring here i'm going to use eight penny hot dip galvanized nails So what I got going here is I put the railroad ties down and I'm leaving a space. I, I have an idea for what I want to use to attach this to the floor framing. I don't really want to have this attached where I can't get to it in case I ever need to replace it. So let's go check out the uh, bone yard and see what we can find. I think I got some angle iron over there that uh, might do the trick. Well, the two railroad ties definitely didn't make a dent in my stash but let's check out this little metal pile i got going on over here yeah right where i left them these already pre-drilled no i don't have to do nothing let's go uh cut them up and see how they work
finally get to break into my lag bolt stash. We'll use these for attaching to the, actually, we'll use these ones for attaching to the railroad ties. And then I'm gonna send these through the uh, joist. And then these will just be uh, intermediate in between joist areas. So what I'm thinking here is I cut these down into foot pieces and I'm gonna put it here on the corners. Uh, I'll do about three on each side. So I'm gonna continue putting these brackets on. I think that's enough for this video. Next one, we're gonna set these corner posts and hopefully get the walls framed up. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. And if you wanna see how the rest of this comes along, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.